Credit is super powerful if used the right way. Some people in this room are afraid of credit. Raise your hand if you're afraid of credit. Keep them up. Does anyone want to come up here and tell me why they're afraid of credit? Do you want to come up? Okay. Yeah. Are you afraid? No, I'm afraid. <laughs> Let's go. Give them a round of applause. Make some noise. Thank you, man. No Dude, give me a hug, man. No Look worries. at this guy. Can you get some pictures? Do it. Guys, everyone take out your phone. Get a picture of this guy. This guy is all in all the time. All in all the time, right? He's getting up here. He's making the move. Action. Action. I would say my, my relationship with credit comes, stems from the struggle, right? The foundation. Okay. My family didn't come from, you know, much and uh, hardworking, you know, blue collar textiles in Fall River. Um, so relationship with money wasn't the best either. And credit was always like a, a bad thing, right? Because interest rate, high interest rate. High interest right? rate, yeah. And it really wasn't always that mindset of whatever I use pay off right away. It was always that like, oh, I'll just pay it later. And, oh, mm. that's the, that. It's more the relationship and more the foundation from the beginning. So the interest rate and uh, if you don't pay for it, you know, you might have some extra fees. So credit's bad. Mm. That, that's, that's what you believe? Do you still believe that? It's, it's getting better, man. And, 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 I, and I credit everyone out, everyone around and where I put myself too in these rooms as well. Mm -hmm. But it, there's always that fear factor. Man. A little you know, fear factor. Because of those, those high interest rates and, you know, that uh, it's that comfort level, right? Where it's yeah. just like, it's not, nothing tangible. Mm -hmm. Even though it is, has a yeah. lot, right? Like, look at this room, the yeah. amount of money that's in here. But is it really tangible, you know? Is it, it, I don't, Can you I don't use see it? that same value. Yeah. You know? It, so just so you know, you're the only person that actually feels that way in this room. No one else in this room feels that way about credit. Am I right? Wrong. What? Wrong. What do you mean I'm wrong? <laughs> you mean other people in this room feel the same way Kevin does? Yes. Come on, you're lying to me. I think it's the tangible factor, man, and that's why yeah. I like real estate as well. Mm -hmm. Because you can the... reach out and touch it. Interesting. Yeah. So, can I ask you a question? If, and I don't mean, is it okay if I maybe, maybe maybe change some, some yeah, oh, all right, good. perfect. You want the kitten gloves or you want the axe? <laughs> uh -huh. I'll take it all. All right, so if you use electric, you have a, you know, a house, you use your electric bill, um, if you didn't pay for electricity, would they charge you extra fees? course. Yeah. And if you didn't pay your electric bill um, for months, what would they do? Cut it off. Mm. But it's, that's tied to, to, how you say it, it's tied to uh, a necessity. A necessity? Yeah. Versus... A Is money a necessity? I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not water, it's not air, but it's right up there with them, right? It's right up there with them. So I hear what you're saying, but if you think about it, if you use electricity because you're using it, right? And to me, if I use credit to build my businesses, that's a necessity, right? I use my businesses to provide the lifestyle, right? To be able to uh, allow me to invest in real estate, right? It's a necessity to me. Without credit, I can't buy these deals. Without my credit score being fixed, I can't get these deals. So it's a necessity to me to have credit. But if I don't pay my electric bill and my electric gets turned off, that doesn't make electricity bad, does it? No, it doesn't. No. It, no. And it is, it's that. A little bit of shift there, right? It's that switch. So can we all agree that as long as you have, like if you have access to credit and there's no annual fees, like there's, there's no cost to having it. It's just, it's a tool, right? If you're not using electricity and it sits there, you don't have a bill, right? It just, I mean, besides the normal monthly fee, right? But if you're using credit and you're using electricity, you got to what? You got to pay the piper. Mm. Right. Do you... Do you see a, uh, a problem with credit within like society and in the country as a whole? Can I ask you a question? Is the problem credit or is the problem the habits that people have when it comes to credit? The habits, right? So if we can shift the way people use credit the right way, the problem is not credit, right? And a lot of people feel the same way Kevin does, right? Raise your hand if you've ever felt this way. But if you think about it like it's a utility, if you think about it that you use it, for your business, to scale your business, to provide opportunities, you have to believe that there are lots of benefits to credit, right? It allows you to scale faster. If you have, let's just say $10,000 and you're sick, right? And you have to use $10,000, you don't have the cash in the bank, right? What are you gonna do? You're just gonna go to the hospital and say, uh, you know, I'm just gonna tough it out? No, but credit allows you to be able to pay for those emergencies, right? Yeah. And, and it's also purchase protection. 
If you buy something, or I don't know if Mitch J is in the room or not, but uh, he shared a story with us the other day. If you rent a car and you crash the car, what are the, some of these credit card companies, what do they do? They'll take care of it, right? So it protects you. So a lot of people have this misbelief that if you use a debit card, it's better, right? Because you have the cash in the bank. But it's just a shift. It's just a shift. And we're going to get you through that today, Kevin. Is that all right? Does that sound good? Give Kevin a round of applause. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much, man. Does that make sense? You guys hear what I'm trying to say when it comes to credit? It's not credit that's bad. It's the way we use credit. But if we can use credit the right way, you can use it to scale faster, you can pay for emergencies, and you get that fraud protection. Not frog, fraud. I love it. So open the lines of credit before you really need them. I'm a big believer in this. Big believer in this. Dig your well before you need water, right? You guys ever heard this? Network with the people in this room today, even if you don't have a deal, even if you don't have the money, shake the hands, get the phone numbers, meet the people that will help you achieve your goals when you need it. Get the lines of credit that you need to be able to pay for the opportunities. Sound good? Yeah. Who's going to open up lines of credit? I love it. I'm going to show you the right way. Perfect. Let's move forward one click at a time. Rule number one of credit, say it with me. If you use credit... You have to pay it back. One more time. If you use credit, you have to pay it back. One more time. If you use credit, you have to pay it back. Good job. So everyone's going to do that from now on, right? No one's going to turn their electricity bill on and not pay their bill and get hit with the fees. We're going to use credit the same way, right? If we use credit, we're going to pay it back. Good job. Louder? Pay it back. Oh, I love you guys. You guys are the best. Awesome. So now I'm going to show you how to fix your personal score. Right, does anyone, if, don't raise, you, don't, you don't have to raise your hand, but if your credit score starts with a four, five, or six, we're going to show you how to fix that today. Does that sound good? Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. I love it. And we're also going to teach you the difference between personal credit and business credit. Do you guys know there's a difference? Yeah. Raise your hand if you didn't know there was a difference. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. And I'm going to show you guys how to get access to $100,000 so we can scale those businesses faster. Perfect. So disclaimer, the information I'm going to share with you is for entertainment purposes only and not financial advice. Although many have had successful results using these strategies, there is no guarantee that you'll receive the same results. Everyone's situation is different. We have to say this, right? It's not financial advice. We're going to show you things that have worked for me, things that have, at this point in time, I've coached over 5,000 people on how to fix their credit. So I've got some tools and resources to be able to do this. And in fact, here's some results that I've had in the past, teaching people how to get their credit score over 800. Some people, you know, around 766. Matt, what's your credit score? 820. 820. There it is. So we got some people in the room that we've worked with in the past that, to be able to get this. Is, that, is it safe to say that I've had some experience with fixing people's credit? I love you guys so much. All right, so there are five factors to credit. How many? Five. How many? Five. You guys are great. God, this is the best, most engaged group I've ever had. Give yourself a round of applause. Let's go. All right. How many people knew that there was five factors that impact your credit? How many people didn't? It's okay. Yeah, I didn't know until I started looking into this stuff. Like, I just thought, hey, I'm just going to put it on a credit card. And when I maxed it out, and then next thing you know, my credit score was low, and I tried to go to the bank, try to get a loan. They're like, whoa, what's going on with your debt here? You have some problems, Mitch. we got to fix that before you can get approved for a loan. So five factors of credit. Credit history. You can feel free to write them down, take a picture. I love pictures. <laughs> credit history, credit utilization, credit age, credit mix, and credit inquiries. As you can see up here, each one of these categories has more weight to it. Does that make sense? So... What's more, credit history or credit inquiries? What impacts your score more? History. history. history, all right. What about credit age and credit mix? Awesome. Credit utilization over credit mix? All right. Man, see, you guys are smart. You guys are fast. You guys, you guys are on this. Awesome. Here, the reason we ask questions is to make sure you guys are engaged, right? Because when you're engaged, you're learning. So we want to make sure that you guys are getting everything out of this tonight. So the five factors... You can actually use these different apps. How many of you have one of these apps on your phone right now? How many of you have never heard of any of these apps? It's okay if you haven't. So Credit Karma, Experian, or Credit Sesame will actually tell you what your credit score is. Um, 
where you can actually improve your credit and monitor some of the things that are impacting your credit. So if you don't have one of these and you want to download it, go ahead and download one of these apps. They cost you nothing. Um, don't worry about signing up for their programs. In fact, they'll even tell you um, like how you can improve your credit. Do you have a question? So those ones are for personal credit. We're going to dive into business credit. If, all right. You guys have your pens? Everyone have a piece of pen, a pen and paper? All right. Here's a little uh, bonus tip just because, uh, is it Paula? Paula, awesome, still trap. So uh, Paula asked, uh, if you want to monitor your business credit, nav.com, say it with me, nav.com. It's a great way to monitor your business credit if you have uh, an LLC, perfect. All right, so even though there are five factors of credit, there's really three that matter, as you saw in that list, the different percentages. One's credit history, the other is credit age, and the other one is credit utilization. I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Credit history is basically telling the banks whether or not you pay on time. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you miss a payment, they don't like that, right? If I borrow money from you and I don't pay you back, what are you going to do? Yeah, you're not going to be happy, right? Chase me down, get that money. That's what banks do. Uh, and, and creditors, car payments, all these things, right? If you don't pay for the credit, they don't like that. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. If you have a late payment, a missed payment, or a collection, I'm going to teach you guys how to fix that tonight. Um, credit age. So credit age is something that's really important. In fact, I was lucky that when I was in the Army, I saw all these other people going out and get credit cards. And I went out and got a credit card. I'm like, this is great. I got all this extra money I can spend. And then I got deployed. So luckily, I didn't spend all that extra money at the bar. I didn't spend all that stuff on like the new sound system or for my car or anything like that. I didn't have an opportunity to spend it. But all my friends that did have credit cards, they kind of messed up. They went out, maxed it out, and it's not good when you do that. But because I did it when I was 19, my credit age is much longer. Does this make sense? Right? Because I started back then, I have a long history. My credit age is much longer. So if you can't start back then, when's the next best time? When's the next best time? When's the next best time? That's right. Let's go. I love it. And the third thing is credit utilization. If you use too much available credit, it's a trick, right? A lot of banks will tell you, hey, you got approved for $10,000 in available credit. And then if you spend $10,000 of that credit, what happens to your credit score? Yeah, it's true. It's a test. They... they with personal credit, they actually want to see how you use that credit. Does that make sense? Do you guys know this? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that they would approve you for 10000 but only allow you to use 30%. All right. Credit history. If you have a late payment, missed payment, or a collection, I do have on my website, of course, thecreditrepairblueprint.com. You can get some free dispute letters. Go ahead and check that out or take a picture of it. Don't do it right now. But if you need dispute letters for a late payment, missed payment, collection, or even um, too many inquiries for, from a bank, you can use those dispute letters. I will be crystal clear and honest with you. I'm not going to sell you something that's not going to work. So I give those away for free, right? Here's the problem with these credit repair companies. They sign you up for a program, and it takes six months to sometimes to get these things to work, right? So you're going to pay month after month after month after month to get these dispute letters that may or may not work. So you can get them on my website for free. Because if they don't work, I don't want you coming to me and say, hey, Mitch, I paid for these things and it didn't work. But these credit repair companies out there, they will charge you monthly fees for that. And we want to make sure that you have access to these things. Feel free to give these away. Give them away to as many people because I'm on a mission to help as many people as I possibly can get this credit taken care of because I know that once you fix it, you're going to be able to partner with the right people. You're going to be able to invest in your business. And you're going to be able to take your life to the next level. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. So share those. Um, again, they don't always work, and they can take up to six months. Credit age, um, again, we already covered this. It's best to build your credit now, right? If you, maybe if you only have one credit card, if you, don't, you know, some of these gurus have 10 credit cards, they've been doing it for a while, right? How long have you been, there's people that have 10 credit cards. How many years have you been building your credit? I know there are some people over here. How long? 20 years. Anyone have more than 20 years in credit history? There we go. I see some young faces in the group. Love it. Good work. Good work. So one of the hacks that you can use actually to improve your credit really fast, and a lot of my friends always come, hey, I just bought this new car. My, my interest rate's 14%. You guys have any friends that have paid 14% on a car? 
Yeah, yeah, right? We have friends that pay 14% interest on their cars. That's why you got to give them these letters. You got to fix their credit so they're not paying that money so they can invest with you. But with, uh, with credit age, you can actually really quickly fix that by using what's called an authorized user or a trade line, right? Have you guys ever heard of this? It's a great credit hack. Um, but again, one thing I will say is if you get added to a trade line or an authorized user, make sure they're not maxing out that credit card. Make sure they're not, they don't no late payments and make sure there's a lot of age on that credit card. Does that make sense? You guys writing this down? You guys got this? Awesome. Perfect. So one hack is you can get added to uh, maybe a spouse, a family member, someone with good credit. You get added to their score. If they have a long age, you can actually bump your score 30 to 70 points pretty quick like this. Fix your credit score, interest rate goes down, pay less on your car and house. All right, credit utilization. Again, we went over this. It's a test. Don't use more than. Guys, you got to get louder. I need that energy. You don't use more than. I love it. All right, perfect. So how do you fix credit utilization? Does anyone know? For, what's the first one? Pay down the balance, right? If you use credit, there we go. All right, step number two is uh, request a credit line increase. Do you guys know how often you can request a credit line increase? Every six months. Every six months. How many of you are doing that now? Look at this. So some credit cards will actually do a hard inquiry to do that, but Capital One is one that won't. So if you have a Capital One, you can literally request a credit line increase every six months. Again, the reason you want to do this is because if you can drop your credit utilization down, you can get more credit. And number three is open up more credit. Open up new lines of credit. Does that sound good? All right, perfect. But wait, Mitch, if I open up more credits, I'm going to have a hard inquiry and my credit age will go down. Mm. <laughs> true. It's true. But your available credit will go up. And again, the inquiry is going to fall off in 24 months, right? An inquiry is only going to be between three and seven points. So it's not really, it's 10% at most. It's not even going to really impact your credit score, right? So if you're building credit, again, we already talked about this, right? If you are doing it, you have two options. You can do it now or you can do it 10 years down the road. If you do it now, your credit age will start to grow. If you do it 10 years down the road, you still have to wait for it to grow. So it's better to do it. Now. It's better to do it. Now. It's better to do it. Now. That's right, guys. Good job. Awesome. So number four, the fourth option is to use business credit. How many of you have business credit? How many of you want to know how to use business credit? Here's the thing about business credit. The right business credit doesn't report to your personal credit score. Does that sound cool? Right? So last month, uh, actually about five weeks ago, we bought a house up in Vermont. We paid $60,000 for it. We put $47,000 into renovations for that property. We listed it for two twenty-nine, dollars and uh, we actually got it under contract for two thirty-three. dollars Anyone good with math? Paid sixty, dollars put forty-seven dollars in, under contract for 233. It's $126,000 spread. Here's the even cooler part. Those renovations are on credit cards, right? So how much out of pocket are you? Like, so an interest payment? Some of these credit cards actually have no interest for 12 months. Is that cool or what? Is that gonna help you in your business if you open up a credit card to be able to pay for your rehab cost? To be able to stretch it out over 12 months? How long does the average flip take? Matt, how long does it take you to flip a house? Four weeks, my man. He's a, he's a machine. To do the rehab. So, so Matt and I have partnered on a few deals together. The guy's an animal. He's got, he's got a ton of construction guys. How, how many, on average, all right, on average, just say it's 2,000 square feet. How long would it take you to flip that house? How long, four months? Okay, so if you have a credit card that lasts 12 months interest-free, is it safe to say that you'd be okay? As long as you're making those monthly payments? It's a gr For me, it's something that allowed me to be able to flip six houses at a time. New LLC, new credit card, interest-free, boom. 